Hello, and welcome to this microwave engineering lecture titled Series and Parallel Microwave Resonators. In this lecture, we will go over series and parallel resonance circuits. We will look at the quality factor Q, and finally we will look at loaded and unloaded Q. Microwave resonators are used in many applications, including filters and amplifiers. The operation of microwave resonators is very similar to the lumped element resonators in circuit theory, so we will begin by reviewing them in this lecture. Here is a picture of a series RLC resonance circuit. The input impedance of this circuit is given by R plus J omega L plus 1 over J omega C. Here is a graphic of the frequency response of this circuit in which the vertical axis is the input impedance magnitude and the horizontal axis is the normalized frequency where one is the resonant frequency. The half power bandwidth is also shown here. Now let's look at some parameters of the series resonant circuit. The complex power delivered to the resonator is given by one half of the voltage times the conjugate on the current. With Ohm's law, we can write this in terms of the current, so it is equal to one half of the input impedance times the magnitude of the current squared, which leads to this expression. The power dissipated by the resistor R is called P loss, and it's given by one half of the magnitude of the current squared times R. The average magnetic energy stored in the inductor is given by one half of the magnitude of the current squared times the inductance. And the average electric energy stored in the capacitor is given by one fourth of the voltage in the capacitor squared times C, which in turn is equal to one fourth of the magnitude of the current squared times one over omega squared C. Now we can rewrite the complex power delivered in terms of the energy stored and power dissipated, which is equal to the power loss in the resistor plus 2j omega times Wm minus WE, where Wm is the energy stored in the inductor and WE the energy stored in the capacitor. With this, we can now write the input impedance in terms of the energy stored and power dissipated, which is equal to 2Pn over the magnitude of the current squared, which leads to this expression. At the resonant frequency, we have the Wm equals WE, so the input impedance now becomes P loss over one half of the magnitude of the current squared, which is equal to R, and the resonant frequency omega naught is given by 1 over square root of the inductance times the capacitance. Now let's look at the parallel resonance circuit. Here is a picture of a parallel RLC resonance circuit. The input impedance is given by the inverse of the sum of 1 over R, 1 over J omega L plus J omega C. This is the normalized frequency response of the parallel resonance circuit, where 1 is equal to the resonant frequency. The vertical axis is the input impedance magnitude and the half power bandwidth is shown here. Now let's look at some parameters of the parallel resonance circuit. We'll first define the complex power delivered to the resonator, which is equal to 1 half V times the conjugate of the current. We can write this expression in terms of voltage, so it's equal to 1 half the magnitude of the voltage square over the conjugate of the input impedance which is equal to this expression. And the power dissipated by the resistor R in terms of voltage equals 1 over 2 times magnitude of the voltage squared over R. The average magnetic energy stored in the inductor equals 1 fourth of the magnitude of the current in the inductor squared times inductance L 
and written in terms of voltage equals one fourth of the magnitude of the voltage squared times one over omega squared L. And the average electric energy stored in the capacitor WE equals one fourth the magnitude of the voltage squared times capacitance C. Now we can write the complex power delivered in terms of the energy stored and power dissipated and we have this familiar expression. And the input impedance rewritten in terms of energy stored and power dissipated is equal to this expression. Let's see how this circuit behaves at resonance. The resonant frequency we have that Wm equals WE. So the input impedance now becomes the power dissipated in the resistor over one half of the magnitude of the current squared, which is equal to the resistor value. And the resonant frequency is given by one over the square root of inductance times capacitance. As a side note, the resonance in a parallel RLC circuit is sometimes referred to as an anti-resonance. Now let's define the quality factor Q. The quality factor Q is the ratio of energy stored in the resonator to the energy lost per cycle. And it's given by this formula. Q equals omega times the average energy stored over the energy loss per second. It's equal to omega times Wm plus WE over P loss. Some losses in the resonance circuit are attributed to conductor loss, dielectric loss, radiation loss, or other external network connections. Loss here is represented by R. A lower R means lower loss, which leads to a higher Q. The Q of a circuit without any external loading effects is called Q0 or unloaded Q. The higher the Q, the lower the bandwidth BW, which is given by this expression. These are some examples of the quality factor Q for a parallel resonant RLC circuit. Here is an example of a low Q, a medium Q, and a high Q. Now let's look at the quality factor of the series resonance circuit. Recall that at resonance we have the Wm equals WE. So the unloaded Q in a series resonance circuit becomes omega naught times 2 Wm over P loss, which is equal to omega naught times inductance over the resistance, and it's equal to 1 over omega naught R times C. Notice that Q increases as R decreases. Now let's look at frequencies near resonance. Let omega equals the resonant frequency omega naught plus delta omega, where delta omega is small. The input impedance now becomes this expression. We rewrite the input impedance in this form, which leads us to this expression, R plus J omega L times omega squared minus omega naught squared over omega squared. When delta W is really small, we have that omega squared minus omega naught squared equals 2 omega times delta omega. So we can rewrite the input impedance again and find that Z in is roughly equal to R plus J2L delta omega, which is roughly equal to R plus J2 RQ naught delta omega over omega naught. This means that a series resonator with loss can also be modeled as a lossless resonator whose resonant frequency omega naught is replaced with a complex effective resonant frequency as given by this expression. This is useful because for lossy resonators we can begin the solution for the lossless case and then replace omega naught with the complex resonant frequency. Now let's look at the Q of the parallel resonance circuit. 
Recall that at resonance, we have that WM equals WE. So Q0 in a parallel resonance circuit becomes this expression. Omega0 times 2WM over P loss, it's equal to W0R over L, and it's equal to W0RC. Notice that Q increases as the resistance increases. Let's look at frequencies near resonance. Let omega equals omega naught plus delta omega where delta omega is small. The input impedance now becomes this expression, which in turn is roughly equal to this, and finally is roughly equal to R over 1 plus 2J Q naught delta omega over omega naught. If R equals infinity, the input impedance now becomes 1 over J2C times omega minus omega naught. As in the series case, a parallel resonator with loss can also be modeled as a lossless resonator, whose resonant frequency omega naught is replaced with a complex effective resonant frequency, as given by this expression. Now let's look at loaded and unloaded Q. Here is a schematic of a resonance circuit either series or parallel connected to an external load RL. Notice that if the load resistance RL equals infinity, then the loaded Q equals the unloaded Q, Q0. The series RLC resonator has RL connected in series, so the overall resistance contribution is R plus RL. In the parallel RLC resonator, RL is connected in parallel. So the total resistance contribution is equal to the parallel combination of these resistances. We can define also an external Q, QE, which is given by this expression for series circuits, omega naught L over RL. And for parallel circuits, it's equal to RL over omega naught times L. And now here, the loaded Q, QL, can be expressed as 1 over QL equals 1 over the external Q plus 1 over the unloaded Q.